Hello folks, it has been a good while since we gave you a super yacht update and I figured what better opportunity than here today when there's a risk of death or injury from a high voltage battery. So we're in the boot here and it's somewhat different from when you last saw it. Gone are those horrific uh, green batteries. Uh, they were simply in there for testing and proving that our Lexus gearbox could in fact move a car. And as we found, it indeed can. So it is now time to fit something with a little bit more punch. Enter these guys. Uh, what we have here for you are packs of uh, what I believe are Dow Cocam uh, 53 amp hour pouch cells. And they have been... Uh, built into these boxes, I must admit not by me, and obviously put in there with some automotive grade uh, expandable foam uh, for maximum professionalism. Um, I've been told that they never did a day's work due to the fact that whatever uh, silly amateur hour BMS that had been fitted to them went crazy uh, even before they were fitted into the intended application. So I've got two of these in the boot here and uh, as usual there's a bit of a time pressure element on me here so I have to very quickly uh, get these guys ready to move the car for me uh, in the next few days. Now part of that procedure is removing the remnants of these BMS adapter cards uh, so I'm getting those out I have successfully managed to do it on this one without death injury or short circuits but what I'm figuring is when I get into this one here I'm going to be tireder I'm going to be more of my you know arms are going to be more fatigued and so forth so the risk of there being an explosion increases and I thought what better way to get extra clicks on my half-assed YouTube channel than to Take that risk so here we we here we are today for you uh, risking life and limb uh, without the correct tools by the way I am a big Milwaukee tools fan so if you happen to be watching this Milwaukee uh, a quarter drive um, ratchet would be ideal uh, for my application see see that thing was rolling around it wanted to create a short so we're now going to get into this one, which is basically the same again. And, uh, oh, hang up. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah. So they all came with these kind of adapter boards on them. And there was a BMS board that I have since disposed of that sat on top of these. And there was so much heat dissipation and so much resistors on here that it caused the boards to warp and to pop up off these uh, connectors, which actually save the battery. So these, these two will be pretty, pretty easy. We can uh, just go straight in here with our Milwaukee brushless. And uh, just start powering out these which are actually top spec stainless bolts, folks. They are do they do not stick to a, a magnet, and I believe not that that makes me any kind of an expert, but I do believe that there are three one six stainless ones that don't stick to a magnet. So, yes, welcome, welcome to my life, which is going to involve taking out all of these bolts getting rid of all of these PCBs but simultaneously not causing a short circuit anyone want to place a bet on that I 
I wouldn't. Now I know that these might look like some cheap microfiber buffing cloths that I purchased from eBay, but these are in, they are in fact um, super high dielectric strength automotive rated battery insulating cloths. And this may look like a just a you know average quarter drive wobbler ready to fly off and short circuit something but this is in fact carbon fiber yes and therefore will not cause a short circuit i wish ooh, 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 come on. Ah, don't do that my carbon fiber wobbler oh yes that'd be nice wouldn't it See, I might add as well that the professionals that uh, fitted these treadlocked the screws and also these PCBs have warped so much that they expand as I let the fasteners off. So therefore increasing the probability of disaster. On Milwaukee, sponsor me. By the way, have you guys seen the Milwaukee chainsaw? That thing is insane. Not that I do much chainsawing, but you know, you know yourself. Never have too many tools. And we have another microfiber. I mean, I mean uh, insulating here our next task is to break these fasteners loose so that we reduce the probability of the wobbler doing a wobbly uh, when we start to power them out with our Milwaukee drill and this one here now really wants to give me a bad hair day because it's probably been cross-threaded as well as treadlocked This may look like I just put some cheap insulating tape around this socket screwdriver thing. This is in fact carbon fiber wrap. Thus, when I do drop my screwdriver in here eventually, um, the chances of a short circuit should be somewhat mitigated. Sadly for my YouTube popularity, of course. We're nearly there, and thus I figured the odds on a short circuit should be at their highest right now. And don't worry, by the way, folks, while I am removing this joke of a thing that was fitted here, we will be putting a BMS on these cells because I know some people get worked up about that. And I don't want to be responsible for anyone having a bad hair day including myself, because I've had way too many bad hair hair days, as you can see by my head. I remember watching this documentary about Royal Navy nuclear subs, and the captain, and we're interviewing him, and we're asking about the auxiliary diesel generator, or whatever it is on the sub, and he said in kind of very typical English understatement is, well, if you had to start the diesel while it's at sea, it would be a bad hair day for everyone. So, that stuck with me for some reason. So if I drop one of these screws in here, it would be a bad hair day for everyone. Maybe not on the same level as a nuclear reactor meltdown, but maybe close enough to it with the amount of lithium that we have in here. Fiber beauty. Three screws to go, folks. Will he screw up? Or will the wind just drown out all oh, the microphone? You see, 
that's the thing about filming stuff there's always some environmental factor just waiting in the wings to ruin your day ah oh, no you're not doing that to me No, I'm not being electrocuted, so please don't smack me with a plank. I am getting these cramps in my fingers, so that's good news for you guys. This is the penultimate screw, so... Ah, if I can just get this one to short circuit, and it'll be in an inaccessible part of the battery too, maximizing the fire destruction. And those clicks. Because I'm all about the clicks, as you know. Click, 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 click. Oh, that was a near one. And we got the last screw. And these PCBs, by the way, have been designed so that they actually can short circuit the goddamn battery. Yeah. Oh, to be a professional. Oh, Last one. <sighs> oh. Ah, ha ha. There we have it, folks. Let's remove our carbon fiber mats. There it is. All its glory. Another 60 cells. Now we are going to be running a hundred. There are six packs of ten in each of those. So we're going to be using five out of each for the initial pack just to get us moving down the road. Okay folks, we're going to just wrap up today's video. Uh, with a quick look at the battery management system that we're going to use on our Cocam pack in the E65. As you would probably see here on the bench, I'm still very much uh, working away on the Model 3 BMS. We've, we've had some amazing breakthroughs on that and I will be giving you an update ASAP. But uh, back to the system here that we're going to use on our Cocam pack. I just want to say very briefly that um, I'm not going to be getting into any discussions relating to battery management systems. Uh, when I was young, my mother gave me one uh, piece of advice that has stuck with me. She said to me, never discuss religion or politics with people that you do not know. So the EV, equivalent of that is never discuss battery management systems with people that you do not know so all we're going to do is we're going to focus on our uh, system that we're going to use so i will ask people you know please don't uh, start asking me questions about what i think about this or that relating to battery management um that is not something that i'm going to get into so the system that we are going to use is the open inverter uh, battery management system. Uh, it was designed by Johannes and uh, actually there's a name here on the other board, A. Martel uh, on the open inverter forum. So this is the kind of, I guess you'd call it the master head unit or controller. Uh, it's based on an STM32F105 uh, microcontroller because uh, that has two CAN buses on it and it'll have the you know, just the usual uh, Wi-Fi module of course I don't have one here I've scavenged that for an inverter kit or something like that but this is the um, this is the master let's say and the slave boards uh, I've got a box of them here that Johannes sent me some time ago um, so let's get you in here. I will go into much more detail on this when we're actually fitting them to the car. But these are the slave boards. Uh, these guys basically measure, I believe, four cells. Now, 
what is driving me uh, towards using this um, is that number one, uh, those cold cams are very much an unknown quantity. So I do want to be able to uh, observe how the individual cells behave. And uh, number two, this, um, this system is designed um, in a way that I quite like in that it kind of follows, I guess, the Hippocratic oath that medical practitioners follow, and that is first do no harm. So this is designed in such a way that even if it goes crazy, uh, it would take it probably a year to um, ruin any of the cells in that pack. Uh, it's just the way that uh, that it's been designed that I very much like. Uh, so this is what we are going to be fitting. So I say each of these and just four cells, we're going to have 100 cells in total, uh, 50 in each of those um, um, what are they called? Fiberglass boxes that we just show, show, showed you. So uh, we're going to be fitting. What's four into fifty? I don't know. Whatever it is, uh, into each of those, uh, we'll have some, you know, kind of polycarbonate cover going in there and stuff to mount these on. So I've got to work that part out. Um. These communicate over a one wire interface. So there's literally just one wire linking the whole thing. So we take one wire out, goes around all the slaves and back uh, to the controller. Uh, so I guess, you know, it has its own similarities to the, um, the Tesla system here and actually a few more similarities also. So folks, this is what we're gonna be doing uh, with our E65. I just thought it was worth giving you a little bit of an update so that you know that uh, the car is not off the radar. As usual, there's a couple of pressure points coming into me now, so I need to get it under its own power again, ASAP. Uh, so we're gonna be getting that happening. When we do, we'll be able to do some, uh, hopefully a few more, um, I guess, performance related drives. Everyone's asking me in all of these videos, what's the range, what's the range, what's the performance, all that. Folks, the battery that we fitted to it um, was just there so that we could prove that the Lexus GS450H gearbox can actually propel a car and not overheat or you know didn't need 650 volts and all of these other myths that were just circulating around the whole uh, thing. So now that we know that uh, we're going to be fitting our Cocam pack, our open inverter BMS system. So that's it. I've uh, rattled on enough and sadly there were no explosions. I did try to get something in there to short circuit some of those cells but unfortunately my uh, professionalism got in the way and uh, I didn't quite manage it. So we will leave you at that. Um, as always, don't forget to check the links in the description for Patreon, PayPal, Open Inverter Forum, GitHub. By the way, this BMS also is completely open source um, from a hardware point of view, definitely. Uh, what else is in there? Whatever else I can put in. JLC PCB, where we get all of our boards made now. Uh, just have a fantastic service. And um, yeah, so that's it, guys. And uh, until next time. Ooh. Happy BMS fitting. Hmm.